number six. So module number six is going to start off on page 77 of your manual. If you want to grab those, we can look at that. We're going to go through the same routine here of going over the, um, the learning objectives. So participants learn and process of creating an outcome scale. Participants understand how outcome scales can be used to measure incremental change and movement towards self-sufficiency. Participants are able to combine outcome scales to form an outcome matrix. We're entering the matrix to capture the multiple interventions, needs, programs, and outcomes. And participants understand the uses of the outcome matrix. So as we cruise on to page number 78 here, we're going to talk a little bit about what an outcome scale is, okay? And so we are at this point, we've done assessment, planning, implementation, achievement of results, and now we're looking at kind of this evaluation place and looking at comparing benchmarks. So in the Roma cycle, uh, we have to embrace the idea that um, outcomes are part of our daily administration of tasks. It's something that we target all the time. It's part of something that is integrated into the management and operations of our human services. So what we want to do right now is we're not talking about replacing tools that you are already using within your department. We're talking about these outcome scales and the matrix is something that can be supplementary. So it's just thinking about ways that we capture some of these changes and we evaluate and establish baselines. We're not looking to replace anything that's already been established that you've invested time and energy and have the history with. So it's just important to know this is supposed to be a complementary piece and not something that is intended to replace anything. So um, we've reviewed all of our learning objectives for today and we're gonna talk about how an outcome scale is really just a continuum that describes different stages or different states of conditions or status. And one of the most simple ways that we can do that is with the idea of the gas gauge. So why do we keep an eye on the gas gauge? So yeah. Fuel. yeah, because it changes, right? Like it changes throughout the, the time. So we have benchmarks on this gas gauge so that we're constantly able to evaluate when we need to intervene and go get gas. These benchmarks mean different things for different people, okay? Different vehicles. My dad has like a 1984 F-150 that gets like, you know, one gallon or, you know, like one mile <laughs> per gallon. Like it's horrible. And I drive a super sweet Honda minivan that's much more fuel efficient. So for him, when he sees he has a quarter of a tank, it's like, holy cow, am I going to make it to the gas station? For me, I'm like, I'll push it, you know. We can continue to go with that. So that level of intervention really depends on certain factors, right? Like when we're going to jump in and when we're going to intervene with this. So. When do you guys stop for gas? Do you stop at a full tank? When the light comes on? When my gauge says I only have 50 more miles. Okay, so yeah, you got an automated gauge that tells you you got 50 more. So really, again, we have to be looking at um, what makes the most sense and making our decisions based off of the size of our tank, the type of vehicle that we're driving. But then also it's important to think about circumstance. And you know, if you're cruising right. along and you're going up Highway 12, I don't know if you guys or have done like that, and to, you are going along the Loxa and you see the sign that says that this is the last gas station okay. for like 90 miles yeah. and yes. you know, you're at a quarter of it. Like, do you at that, or let's say 300 miles, the last right. gas station for 300 miles. Yes. So even if you have a half a tank at you that You still point, fill up. You fill up, right? You fill up because we're always trying to make sure that our intervention happens before we hit our crisis mode. Mm. Because once we hit crisis mode and we are in crisis and it's on empty, it's a heck of a lot more expensive and it's a headache to try to be just like so many things, you know. We don't want to be in crisis mode. We want to intervene before we do that. We use the gas gauge as that visual to make sure that we are intervening using the information that we know. Our you know, fuel efficiency, access to our gas stations, those type of a things. So 
Um, that's just an important thing to think about. And it translates well, it works well, because with uh, the, the, what was it, the MATIF, the CSBG Monitoring Assessment and Task Force from the early 1990s, remember we talked about these guys already, and they provided some examples of scales so that we would know when to effectively put some interventions in. And some of these scales really translate well to, to what we see on a fuel gauge, okay? So what we see here is thriving, safe, stable, vulnerable, and in crisis. Do those seem to kind of resonate with the spots on a gas gauge? You know, if you're at half a tank, I feel better at half a tank than I feel at a quarter of a tank. Right. I really do. I don't know many people that feel better about a quarter tank than a half a tank. <laughs> so, <laughs> So I'm not unique in that way, but it's a really, I mean, we Sorry. have to think about that psychological component of it because right here, as you'll see on page 79 there, that line indicating it is really that prevention line, okay? So what we see is that down here, vulnerable and in crisis, we're thinking about that for the folks that we serve, okay? When you're vulnerable and in crisis, another thing that, that that might refer to below the prevention line is dependence. You're dependent on getting some outside help in order to make your situation better because in that moment, it's not safe. And if you're vulnerable, it could get worse, okay? And up here, when you're stable, you're safe, you're thriving, you're at a level of dependence, or independence, independence. So. Again, we look at this prevention line and we make sure that we intervene before we get to that in crisis mode. So different programs use these assessments in order to determine where people are and establish benchmarks when they enter into programs. An outcome scale is also helpful with deciding when it is appropriate for us to intervene. We don't necessarily want to intervene prematurely. If it's, if it's something that a client can self-resolve, we don't want to jump in there. But we also don't want to watch somebody that we're working with move down to end crisis if there's something that we can do to help offset that trajectory. So we have these benchmarks that have been dis defined and now with, um, again, that localized nature of what Community Service Block Grant is and Community Action Networks, we're able to locally really get some definitions of what each of these benchmark means for the communities that we serve and potentially just for the specific programs that we operate. So the five benchmarks let us assess or measure movement of customers too. We get that baseline. This is where you were when you came in you were in crisis, we helped you out by providing some financial and case management assistance so you could access housing, and now you've moved up to safe. So those are things that are just helpful in that process. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to page number 80, where we're gonna develop a housing outcome scale, and this is gonna be part one of what we do right now. Let's think about what kind of housing situations exist within our community. And when we talk about housing situations, we're talking about like, um, you know, you're, you're staying with a friend or you're a homeowner. So what, let's just get a couple examples. Um, in, in a tent, tent outside. You're sleeping in your car. Or in a tent above the tent. Is it couch surfing? At your parents' house? I feel like that's just being couch. Yeah, that's <laughs> um, Hotel Motel, Super 8. Holiday, Hotel Motel, Holiday Inn. Um, that's a no shelter. Shelter. You're some water. You're renting shelter. somewhere. Yeah. Let's think about that's other ends of the spectrum. We're talking about some Mansion. kind of dire situations Rent right now. I mean, you renting. Renting an apartment. Google. Yeah. Google. Owning a home. <laughs> Under the bridge. With property. <laughs> uh -huh. Down by the river. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're going to say overcrowded apartment in a van or housing. <laughs> group home in the chop house. Oh, yeah. Okay. Group home, yeah. Okay. Um, Flop house. Chop house. Half White house. Sorry. White house? Okay. Chop house. White house. <laughs> White house. <laughs> I have never That's heard of a chop house. house. So, um, 
Um, so we've got a good selection here of different ones, owning a home, renting a home. We can also think about some, you know, with renting, there's subsidized housing, there's regular market housing. So lots of different ways that we can divide and look at it. But I think that the, the bigger part of our story right now is that we want to be able to... I'm going to try to do this. Just yeah, you, I know. Go fast. I, I'm going to yeah. do it like a building. Oh, you have go it. Go fast. Yeah. Up and yeah. fast. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. It's just so sad. You could tape it together. Uh, there you go. Uh, there you go. There you go. I think it's in crisis. It is in crisis. We've got a, we've got a pattern crisis here. So, yeah. um, okay, so we've written these down. So this is a brainstorm, and we've got a full range of, of, of different situations. We've got a full range of them here. So. The purpose of this exercise is going to be to create our own outcome scale. So we see here on part two, which is on page 81, what we're going to do is we're going to transfer the housing conditions to places over here. Okay? Some agencies think that it's a better route to start off over here and then translate information, but that's not necessarily the approach that we want to teach right now because we want to make sure that we're really fitting this specifically on there because sometimes it's like, oh, well, we don't have enough space to add that. You know, there are just different factors that would impact that. So, tint, where right. do we think that would go? Well, in it crisis. depends on the time of year, but <laughs> yeah. in crisis. And the tent. Okay. That's yeah, and the tent. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Water. In the sun. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and what right. do we say about shelter, car? Uh, same crisis. Shelter. And where do we think about shelter? I think shelter is vulnerable is because you're actually okay for the moment, okay. but it could turn into a problem because shelters usually have a lifespan on them, like you can only yeah. stay there nine days or 14 days or whatever. And I like that, yeah, so the, one of the things that we have to have here in order for any of our outcome scales to be effective with our day-to-day -day operations is consensus. So we all have to agree that you know shelter is going to be at a vulnerable point, and I, I like the way that you explained that—that that, that is something that you're safe right now, but you're vulnerable for what the future may hold. So are we cool with that? With that? Yes. Of, I, oh, okay. I have an objection. Of course. We're going to then <laughs> count, We're well, going to raise hands. Shel shelter. Uh, the, well, I didn't put it on there, but it's an emergency shelter. So not too late. When, whenever you're you're in an emergency, that's in my opinion a synonym with crisis. Okay. So I just I think you, know, you don't so go to the shelter, shelter unless you are on the street already. Are we talking about so one person or, or like what if you have kids? <laughs> there's a lot of different variables. A mm -hmm. lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. But let's just be thinking just about like one person. And then, what we're gonna do time. right now is we're gonna do a majority rules. Okay. okay so was. how many people think <laughs> shelter is in in crisis? Okay. But I lost Three. Three. No. And, so, and yeah. so then the remaining are saying that it's vulnerable. Okay. Yeah. And it's imperative for us to know exactly where these benchmarks are because if I'm doing an assessment when somebody comes in and then Sarah's doing an assessment when somebody comes in and we don't agree that shelter is vulnerable, then we're going to have a bad baseline in order for us to judge any sort of change. So that's why we're going to always make sure that we are we are cool with the language moving forward, and we're going to put that down. Okay, so how about renting? That's safe. 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 Yeah. Maybe even thriving. I mean, uh, how about owning? Thriving. thriving. As long as you're, uh, you're not going to foreclosure. Yeah, you're not foreclosure. You work for a couch surfing. That's stable. I'd say stable. There's no way you're vulnerable. If you have that many friends that you're able to couch surf at the time, I feel like you're kind of you're getting onto that. Stable. But I feel like you can burn your bridges uh, really fast. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So you're I would have put it for vulnerable. Okay, but you so, guys so how many vulnerable there, for so. couch surfing? Like you can't yeah, say one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Sean's just dancing. Sean's in it. He was so talking with me. I'm just saying you can't say that. Going in to surf for four minutes and he lives in his car. So yeah, it was the last stop. Yeah, yeah there's the last couch, 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 and then your car. Yeah, and then lots of factors contribute to that. Oh, How about yeah. at Mom Foss' no, house? Yeah, it's just I say stable. stable. Yeah, yeah, you're stable. stable. If Mom Foss' house, you're stable. Yeah. Same, yeah. Can't be in the same category. Yeah. You go down from couch surfing to a shelter. Um, overcrowded <laughs> so space. Parents stable. Overcrowded is vulnerable as well. 
We cool with that? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Is it okay? Okay. <laughs> um, how about in a van down by the river? That's, That's thriving. Right. <laughs> there are some nice vans. Do you have vans. a guitar? Yeah. Or? Does it okay. have government cheese? <laughs> you don't okay. say much, but when you um, do, it's pretty good. <laughs> welcome to Travis. Uh, so, and then group home. Which is another living egg. I love that somebody stable. put that out there. Whoa. I'd say that's stable. I'd say stable. I'd say stable. Mm -hmm. I mean, are people Could comfortable with that? Easy. Yeah. The only reason it's I thought of it because we just weatherized one. So. I'd yeah. Say safe. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah. Would you say safe? I safe? mean, they've got security housing. I'm not housing. sure what the difference safe. is. I would to say me, stable. safe would be stable. something that I, achieve, I, I go for. Yeah. And I don't think I go for a group home. Well, I you wouldn't. But well, you wouldn't, but if we think about different homes that would actually get living. That safe. Yeah. They, 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 chose live that. they chose to live They chose to live in a group home. So, how many say safe? Well, like, I would say safe just because of my background. I would say safe. Okay. So, we're going to go with safe for group homes. As long as people aren't getting raped there. And there's lots of different models of group homes. I mean, a youth home for runaways versus congregate living for adults with developmental disabilities. They're going to have different, you know, it's going to be a different thing. And I think that that's okay. So our point here is that we've worked together as a group. Again, this is a group of excerpts and key informants. And we've made sure to put this on here. What's also important to talk about is that these scales are going to be different in each different community. Yeah. So one community renting, um, let's say, you know, renting might be really scary there. You know, that's a really vulnerable right. spot. So community norms play into this as well. Okay. Um, a group home might be a really horrible option in a place where they have really limited resources and group homes with bad reputation. You know, different yeah. variables play into that. So it's important to have consensus, and that's something that we were able to get yeah, to. So I die. appreciate everybody's ability to work together to come with some, you know, agreed upon terms because that's how we get that effective baseline established. So let's. Do you have a question? It's uh, more of a comment okay. on the whole shelter being the next tier above thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're, you're there for a limited time, and it is a step above living in a tent or whatever, but you're also being exposed to additional resources that could further you into getting, not to, yeah, not to say that they're going to use the resources, but they are exposed yeah. to the resources. Mm -hmm. That's a huge point. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. So. Cool, okay, well now we've been able to successfully complete this. Um, and on page 81, we've done our outcome scale. Uh, don't turn, don't turn. Okay. We can turn now, we're done with our, oh, we're, we're, done. we're done, we're done. Right. I know, I just had to like, I turned, turned. Like, Tony oh turned. Oh my gosh, so and see, <laughs> have our conditions. I think it's um, interesting that they listed how, uh, temporary housing or sheltering and both categories. They actually put a, qual a quantification to it. Yeah. Tra transitional housing for 60 days, safe shelter for 30 days or less. Okay. So right. they based it on the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's that's something that we're going to talk about over out. here when we look that's at the sample just, housing <laughs> scale. Okay, We're going to skip oh. over page 82. We'll come back to that. This is sample. It doesn't mean it's correct. It's just some different ways for communities to look at, um, you know, looking at conditions. What we do see on here is that... Um, that, you know, that there are those, quanti you know, we've quantified different things, okay? So just kind of look this over for a minute. We see that the outcome level is family. Again, just being consistent throughout all of those different stages, okay? So we will now jump into page number 82, and that's really the analysis of what that means there. So it's commonly accept accepted that there's only gonna be one outcome for each of these, or one single value for each of these benchmarks, but that's just not realistic. So we see, and we also see that in their examples there, that there can be some, you know, multiple outcomes in each of those benchmarks, and that's okay as long as they are given some sort of a value. So 10A and 10B, and that relates back to the number of points that you would get. So you see in that benchmarks column, they're going to be allocating a specific number of points for those. And so you see that in, um, 
um, driving 10A and 10B, those have the same value that's there. They're recognized as being very similar. But then there are other spots where that's not the same. Like if you go down to in crisis, you're going to see that under 2A where they have safe shelter for 30 days and then homeless, well, yeah. you, you know, people right. who, yeah, you get two <coughs> points or you get zero, zero. points. Right. So, you know, as long as you're attaching a 